Hi guys, welcome to this powerful video with Apostle Michael Robo. This particular video was carefully selected and edited to improve your knowledge on spiritual things and draw you closer to God. Don't forget to like this video, share with loved ones and family, and subscribe. Stay tuned. When we open the Bible, we are looking for a message to preach. And when we preach that message and people clap, we are excited. When we read the Bible, we are looking for a transaction to carry out. We are looking for how to use the wisdom of God to prosper. And the moment we prosper, we have done all there is to do. There is more than that. As beautiful as that is, there is more. You need to study the scriptures to make your way in life. That's beautiful, but there is more. If you are reading this Bible does not make you become like a God, the day you leave the earth, you failed. And so when we come for a world conference, there are two things I came here to share with us tonight. Number one, is how do we do business with the world and then number two when we start doing business with the world what should we look out for because one of the errors of this particular generation is that they are carried away by the activities and they don't know why they do what they do so even very spiritual things we abuse them i told you a little about prayer yesterday how that our praying now is about the volume of prayer and the prayer posture it is no longer about the impact and the import of prayer the Bible said, as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. So the go of prayer is not the volume. The go of prayer is not the posture. The go of prayer is not how long. But when you start fighting and contending for what prayer offers, a point will come where you will have to pray very long. Because it will take time to arrive there. When you start praying prayer for a long time, a time will come, prayer will alter your posture. It's not you trying to appear in a certain way. It's the energy of that prayer that will reprogram you. But if you don't know that you are joining somewhere, you will camp your tent around posture. You will count your camp your tent around time and you will not bet anything. And at the end of the day, you would have been known as a prayer warrior, but you have no impact in your generation. This is why we fight to make impressions and not impact. So the ministry of the world. How do you engage the ministry of the world? In Acts chapter 6 verse 4, the apostle said, It's not meat that we give ourselves to tables. He said, we'll give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world. How do you engage the ministry of the world? This is a world conference. It's important for you to know how to do business with the word of God. Because if you don't know how to engage the world, you may not make profit in your life. If you don't know how to engage the world, you may never become what God designed you to become. If you don't know how to make business with the world, you may never impact your world enough to transform it. But the Bible said the earnest expectation of creation. He waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For creation is in bondage. The trees around you are waiting for you to manifest. The air is waiting for you to manifest. Creation is dying because we have not awoken as sons. If we do business with the world and do it correctly, something will happen. So first, how do you do business with the world? Four things I will share with us briefly this morning, this evening, and I'm trying to keep it basic. Number one is by reading. Reading not because you want to recite and cram and quote. Reading because you want a dimension to open to you. Because one of the ways to access dimensions is by reading the book. In Isaiah 34 verse 16, it says, Seek ye out of the book of the law and read. So when you are reading, you are not memorizing, you are seeking. And remember I said, if you seek, you will find. So reading is actually a spiritual system. That affords you the privilege to find spiritual things. He says, seek ye out of the book of the law and read. He said, none of these things will fail. He said, none will desire her mate. He said, my, my mouth, it has spoken it. My spirit have gathered it. That means the realities of God are encompassed, collocated, and aggregated in the spirit. But the doorway to those realities in the scripture. So when a man is reading the scripture, he's not trying to read volumes to quote. He's trying to seek something that is hid. He wants something to open to him. And the way he will do it is to read it. That's why sometimes when you are reading, you discover you read again and again and again. If your readership is to seek, you will know that your goal is not to cover a lot. Your goal is to find something. And so a point may come when, while you are reading the scripture, you can read one verse ten times. It's not because the English is hard. It's because there's a door that is here to open. And you will stay there until that door opens. The moment the door opens, you will discover something. That a man who knows is not increasing in knowledge. A man who knows receives freedom. He said, thou shalt know the truth. The truth shall make you free. You don't know the truth to increase in knowledge. You know the truth to step into liberty. And so when you read and find, 
the sign that you have found is that you will step into a kind of liberty that was not there when you started reading you may have been reading there you went to read as a barren woman but when you read and find you will know that your child has come and true to your finding nine months later you will carry your baby and they ask you where did the baby come from it came from the world you may enter there reading with a sickness when you find you will not come out quoting healing scriptures when you come out you will come out with divine health because your finding is a cure to your infirmity so when we go to do business with the world we are going to seek realities but we know that those realities are locked up in the pages of scripture so our job is to dig in until we pull the reality out and one of the ways to do that is by reading this is why we sit on the scripture for hours when you are starting as a beginner you may want to read the bible cover to cover that's good it's good discipline it makes you to be acquainted with the world but when you journey beyond acquaintance you want to search out truth you want to seek reality so you start digging you start digging and the way to dig is by reading this was one of the cultures of the israelites in deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 11 it said when all israel is come to appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose he said thou shall read this law before all israel in all their hearing you will read it he gave us this prescription as a way of life when you appear before the Lord, he says you will read it because you know at that point something is about to open to you. I can tell you our generation have lost the culture of reading. We have lost the culture of reading the world and this is why anything goes. And so you meet a young lady today, a pastor can lead her astray. When you go around African nations, you will start weeping. During the crossover service, there was a church where people sat down and they were baiting young ladies on the altar. They will bathe them, clean them. Somebody will apply cream on their body. Almost naked. Because they told them that's how they will cleanse them of bad luck. And when a generation is daft, anything you tell them go. Because they have not acquired truth for themselves. Have you come to places where they tell you, come and put your money on my shoe, touch my shoe, and you will be rich. And you see people thronging out. Literally anything you see in this generation goes. Because 90% to 95% are spiritual illiterates. And so the reason you have fake pastors is because there are too many fake believers. The day we stop being fake, fake pastors will stop. Because the things most pastors preach where they go to, they can't preach it in minister's conference. Why? Because they know that in minister's conference, everybody knows the truth. They can preach and do what they do when they meet people who don't know. And so when a generation equip themselves with truth and everybody begins to read the Bible, fake men will run. Because when they start talking, you say, wait, but what does the Bible say in John chapter this verse? The person will, will calm down. They are fake pastors because they are fake followers. The day we have real followers, fake pastors will stop. And the way to become real is to take the body of reading this book. It's not everything that is prophesied. It's not everything that is transferred through impartation. Some things are sought. You will seek it by reading. Too many people are not seeking. That's why the level of spiritual illiteracy is enormous. And the darkness of our world is a sign of the lack of truth in possession of the church. A generation will rise that again we go back to the foundations of reading. And everybody will open the pages of scriptures for themselves and find out what is there. Have you seen people who have crisis? She's buried for buried for 15 years and she has not read five scriptures about fertility. And then she's looking for apostles and prophets. She hears there is a program in Onisha. She's there. She hears there is a program in Lagos. She's there. The effort you put in seeking those prophets, if you sat down for two weeks, you would have been amazed. But we don't know the value of the word. If they told you that this is a good mind, you will spend all your life searching it. But you don't know that greater than a good mind, is locked in the book you have dumped in your house for five years somebody will go back and dust off the book and say i want to find out what was said concerning my destiny and then you'll begin to go through the pages go through the pages not because you're about to start preaching but because you are finding who you are from that book because before you were born he knew you he ordained you and he sanctified you to be a prophet but you've got to search it out number two you know it was paul that gave this formula in first timothy chapter 4 verse 13 you see until i come give attendance to reading that was paul mentoring 
his own disciples i know you have followed me i know i've laid hands on you brother give attention to reading and then number two he said to exhortation reading is you digging it from the book for yourself exhortation is to sit and listen to somebody else that have made the research because you can't find everything the burdens of god in your heart is what determines the kinds of things you look for so if i have body for souls when i'm opening the scripture is how to win souls that i will be finding if i have body to make people wealthy when i'm opening the scripture is the strategy of empowering the church through finances that i'll be looking at if i have body to deal with the sick when i'm opening the scripture it is the strategies and the ways of dealing with demons and dealing with sicknesses that i'll be finding but i need much more than what i have body for i may have body for the sick but brother i need money to advance the crusade i may have body for finances but brother i need i need wisdom i need favor and so in order to be fully and thoroughly furnished what i will do is i will go to them that have and i will buy and so in the in the exhortation program what you are doing is that you are buying into the wealth and the discovery of others and so as an individual when my faith level is under attack i begin to look for bishop david Oedeko immediately before i start reading i know it may take a while for me to search the scripture from genesis to revelation to boost my faith if i take three messages from bishop david Oedeko and i hear them for four hours i will start flying at a level that it would have taken two weeks of reading for me to enter the reason is because when you are doing the business of exhortation you are growing in the spirit when i know that i'm about to go for a, a healing meeting sometimes i check my spirit there's no word there sometimes the energy is low and then i quickly look for pastor chris and as i begin to hear him as i begin to hear him my heart begins to burn my heart begins to burn after a while it looks as if if i see cancer i will pull it out because through exhortation i have bought into his feet through exhortation i have bought into his revelation through exhortation i have bought into his anointing and when i step out the things that happen with him begin to happen with me exhortation is a spiritual strategy for us to network so that we'll be complete in our manifestation is the business of the world the word of God is not with one man, it's with many persons. When I'm seeking wisdom and excellence, I can just go and pick any message of Pastor Paul De Farasi. The coordination and the eloquence. Sometimes you wonder, do these people swallow speech when they talk? <laughs> and he's just talking and everything is articulate. Where did you get this from? And when I hear, 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 after a while, my own tongue too becomes fluid. And when I go out and I'm talking, you are wondering, what happened to this man? And they are it happened to him. <laughs> this is how it works. When I want to go for a crusade, I look for Dr. Paul and Angel. Sometimes he shows up and there's no time to preach. He just worships God and in the name of Jesus, in the, the lion dimension, you'll see him waving his hand and demons are going. He can't even stay in one place. And that same energy hits you. And as you go for the meeting, my God, you are wondering what is happening the reason is because the wealth of the church is not in heaven the wealth of the church is in the body and through exhortation we connect to the different custodians of those different dimensions that's why you you destroy your life when you fight graces you destroy your life when you fight custodians because the things of god are no longer in the spirit he has conferred everything to the church he said all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me and he gave that power to the church he said go in that power so everything you are looking for is with someone but it is through the exhortation of the world that those spirits and those realities are communicated in ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 he said as he spake unto me he was not just educating my mind he said the spirit entered into me and carried me to my feet so when we connect to the graces of people through exhortation it is beyond what they are saying you can hear the scripture is quoting and write it but something is happening to you more than scripture because as he speaks the spirit enters you many people who hear me they go back home and it becomes difficult for them to sleep they start praying because i am speaking scripture but they are interacting with fire they don't know how the fire entered them it is the technology of exhortation because not everything can be taught certain things are imparted as a body of spirit and it is through the gateway of exhortation that those things enter you so when you want to grow in the world when you read you also open your ear to exhortation in philippians chapter 4 verse 9 paul said the things that you have seen in me 
the things you have heard he said the same too in second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 he said the things you have received from me before many witnesses he said the same commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others so when we are doing the business of exhortation we are transferring the spirit of the world the same power that is behind the world is what is communicated but those men that excavated it you must hear them if you don't hear them you can't go forward when god wanted the world to receive from christ he said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear hear him because for you to take of what he carries you must hear him so through exhortation we are not just excavating truth through exhortation we are connecting to the spirit of the world you may read about faith but you may not touch the spirit of faith you may have the word of faith for you to take the spirit of faith you may need to find a man that carries it because when that man is talking to you he's not only giving you the word of faith he's giving you the spirit of faith bishop david the record said something he had read scriptures he had memorized scriptures he was walking in faith until he met kenneth e hegging he said why kenneth e hegging was speaking his eyes changed to a, a, the eyes of a baby and instantly something hit him and he fell on the floor and he was crying like a baby i was trying to imagine how when does bishop Oedipo, when bishop Oedipo book cries what does it look like <laughs> a man that rigid like a rock but it came before somebody that carried a voltage a voltage you have the knowledge of faith i have the energy of faith and when he stood before kenneth Hagin, he melted he melted pastor he told the story he said in 1979 they went to tulsa oklahoma and when he entered there he had seen healing before but to his dismay people were being healed like child's play what is this and he said no i will meet this man I know I read about healing from the Bible. You know, there are arrogant people today. They say, me too, I will search. You will search when you are 90 years old. You may only know about salvation. <laughs> when he saw the man, he said, no, what is this? When he entered his office and Kenneth Hagin came to pray for him, he said all he saw was his hand coming. The next thing he discovered, he was on the floor for many minutes. He had gone somewhere that he doesn't know. And he saw Kenneth Hagin put his hand on him praying in tongues. When he returned from Tulsa, the man that went to Tulsa was different from the man that came. Because when you connect to people, you are receiving something. Did you not read about Jesus? Greater than John the Baptist. Yet, there was something that must happen when he connects to John. And he said as he went to the baptismal service, as John the Baptist baptized him, he was coming out of the water spraying the heavens open. Why didn't the heaven open when Jesus was at home? Why didn't the heaven open when Jesus was crawling around? Because the spirit can only be transferred when you connect to the one who carries it. It's the spirit of exhortation. Hmm. Hmm. In 1 John chapter 1, from verse 1 he said that which was from the beginning which we heard which we looked upon which we handled of the word of life he said that's what we came to commit to you he said for that life that was with the father we have seen him and we declare him unto you he said that which was from the beginning we have seen him and we declare unto you that your joy may be complete and that you may have fellowship with us can they not read the bible for themselves there are some that have not only heard there are some that have not only seen they have handled of the word of life so when a man who has handled is talking to you the dimensions he will take you to will be deeper than everything you have read so sometimes when you want to make progress by the word god himself will lead you to a man that's why jesus appeared to paul himself and he said go into the city you will be told what you must do you have met the glorified christ why do you need to see another man because the dimensions are no longer heaven they are with men and if you despise them you will never receive them the reason we, fought, we pursue exhortation is because they are custodians on earth. We are not all the same. We are not all the same. And in the ministry of the world, there is a dimension of the world you will never have. You will never have it no matter how you study until the one that has it gives it to you. That's why Jesus appeared to Ananias and his, to Paul and he sent him to Ananias. I have given him that dimension. If you don't connect to him, you can't have it. If you like, be arrogant. Your frustration in life will teach you at old age that you erred. It was Pastor Ia Deboe that told the story that in the ancient times, when you are looking for fire, you can decide to take stones and labor from morning to evening until you get a spark. But if you don't want to labor, you'll go and climb a tree. Anywhere you see smoke coming from, go there. 
you will easily fetch fire. One is easy, one is hard. If you want to go the route of reading, keep reading. You may find certain things at old age, but some of us know that through exhortation, we connect to the spirit of reality. And so if I find anybody that has a dimension, I don't waste my time. I don't waste my time. I don't waste my time. I go there and ferociously, I take it. I take it. When I was learning the doctrine of eternal life, I had to search a man that had it. And I heard of Andrew Womack. This guy raises the dead like Chai's play. Why? Because he has caught something about eternal life. And I sat there. I read and listened to this man. I heard messages from morning till night. And the point came. The same name of Jesus that I quote. I said it and the results were what's apart. I showed up in a meeting. I said in the name of Jesus, three people came out. That growth had dematerialized. What? I didn't even have faith for it. But I connected to a man that had life. And life was already flowing through me. What do you mean? Growth has left you. What happened? How did it happen? Are you sure? I said, no, take them out. Maybe the emotion here is high. They are being sensational. I told the keyboard, stop playing. I want to be sure what is happening. The lady said, I had three growths in my breast. He's gone. What? I had to start learning to believe dimensions that were already manifesting. Because I caught it from somebody else. And to make things worse, I traveled to Abia to minister. And the lady showed up. She said she was shot with a bullet. A bullet. And the, the bullet was there. They removed two. It was remaining one. And she said the matter had dematerialized. Even me, I know I don't have faith to command matters to dematerialize. But I connected to somebody that carried life. So when Paul said exhortation, he knows what he's talking about. There is a dimension of the world you will never touch until you go to them that have and buy. That's why he said buy the truth, sell it not. You will pay the price. There are certain men you will buy their messages to hear what you have read from the Bible. There are certain men you will travel for hours, for days to sit down and listen to. Not because you have not read it. You have read the Bible cover to cover. But you yourself, when you hear them, when they open those things, you will know that these are custodians. These are custodians. You will know that these ones are custodians. And then number three, he said doctrine. You want to grow in the world? You must labor in doctrine. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, he said, The elders that rule well, he said, they are worthy of double honor, especially they that labor in the world and doctrine. The reason is because doctrine is hard. It's another level. Reading may be fun. Exhortation may be easy. Doctrine is labor. And for you to be accurate in your word with God, you must know doctrine. Because doctrine becomes the foundation of spiritual accuracy. Spiritual accuracy is not that you met Jesus in the spirit. Any being can appear like Christ. Any being can appear like the angel of light. The only way you can be accurate in the spirit is when doctrine has been ironed out. This is where the labor of the world comes in. And the reason many people are porous is because they never hear doctrine. Hear me. When you do exhortation, you connect to the spirit of that dimension. But it will take doctrine for you to gather truths and compartmentalize them until you are accurate. You may carry, you want to study on love. And you will search the word love from Genesis to Revelation. When you read it and analyze it, you will know that it takes labor to do doctrine. It takes enormous labor. The word of God is not joke. It's not something you just hear and enjoy. Sometimes you are searching the word, you are sweating. It was Kenneth Hagin's son that told the story. That he will go to school in the morning. They wake up, they meet their father. Five different Bible versions are open. And he's reading them. And they will go to school, come back in the evening. The man is still there searching scripture. He wants to know what God said about faith. And he's checking every word that was spoken about faith. Trying to put it in context. To understand this faith mentioned here. What was he referring to? Why was he mentioned? How can it be applied? This one mentioned here. And he's laboring sometimes for two weeks. He will only stand up from there to either eat or to ease himself. It's called doctrine. If a generation does not labor like that, we will err. The reason as by sporos is because they are gifted men, but doctrine is lacking. When you come into this city at night, you dare not go out. My assistant went down yesterday just to get something. And he saw as though buses brought ladies. And almost everyone was naked. Why? Because when they come to church, they only hear about prosperity. They have not heard about the power that purifies. They have not heard about the judgment that is to come. 
So there is a deficiency in truth. And when we come to church and all we do is clap and dance, then a generation will be lost. Because when you meet these ladies and ask of their names, it will be Martha, Mary, Madeline. You will never hear a name that is not a Christian name. Where did they come from? They came from the churches. But we have not labored in doctrine to show them the perspectives of Abba. Every day we come to church, we prophesy prosperity from January to December and the souls of men are dying. Immorality on the high scale and nobody can tell restore because our messages can't pierce their heart. Can't pierce their heart. It will take doctrine for people to understand the vengeance of God. They can balance between grace and judgment. They can balance between grace and obedience. They can balance between grace and sanctification. Because the grace that came to save is the same grace that teaches us that denying ungodly lust, we should live soberly in this world. How come we know the grace that forgives and we don't know the grace that empowers men to live above iniquity? Because there's a deficiency in doctrine. It is materialism. What kind of prosperity is that that impacts only your circumstance and does not impact your soul? Jesus said, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? He said, I wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prospered. You are not prospering because you have a car. You are prospering because you are knowing God more. This is why the benchmark for prosperity is the degree to which you know God. You are not permitted to have more money than you know Jesus. If you have more money than you know Jesus, that money will become your God. But error will continue unless the carpenters that know the foundation of doctrines begin to appear on the scene. There's a deficiency. Who told you power is about healing the sick alone? Who told you power is about people falling under the anointing? Who taught us that garbage? The first realm of power is the ability to tame the flesh. You see, I beat my body. I bring it under subjection. They say you shall receive power and you shall be called the sons of God. The first power you receive, he made you to become. They say as many as received that power, he gave them the authority to become the sons of God. You, are, you talk about power and you are a slave of immorality. You are a slave of lying. You are a slave of fornication. Who told you you know power? He said the prince of this world come to me and find that nothing. The first realm of power is the power that tames the flesh. I can bring my body under subjection. And because I can rule over my body, I can rule over my circumstances. But when there is no doctrine, men that are just excited will say rubbish. And everything about power in our generation is people falling down. They fall down, they go back, and they are the same way they are. in a ah 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 Listen, we are not Christians. It's the people of the world that called us Christians. Find out what the Bible calls us. It called us believers. It called us witnesses. It called us saviors. When I come into a Sabbath and you look at my life, you should be able to tell what humility is. When you look at my life, you should be able to tell what purity is. When you look at my life, you should be able to tell what a God man is. We are the reflectors of God to our generation. That's why I say you are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill that cannot be here. What is the dimension you represent? It will take accurate doctrine for it to happen. Is your governor a Muslim? You see, our problem is Islam. Is your governor a Muslim? How come there is corruption in your land? How come salaries are not being paid? How come affliction and atrocities are happening? Didn't they go to church? Where did they come from? Were they taught by the Hindu gods? Are they not part of us? But why they were rising? They only taught them how to succeed. And their focus was maligned. They thought success is influence and power. Cars and vehicles. They never knew that success is where you are standing in the company of the immortals. When the, when the realms are open, where are you standing? Isaiah thought it was about God of knowledge. When he appeared in the realms beyond the crystals, he said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord and his train filled the temple. Suddenly a national prophet said, woe unto me. I succeeded on earth. I was popular. I was influential. But when the crystals were open and my reality was revealed, I saw that I was wretched. Because if I have no power in that realm, 
Everything on earth is an impression. It's caricature. It will take doctrine. The Holy Ghost told me you don't know grace. He said, unless you can preach grace from revelation. Because when you go into revelation, grace versus works is ratio of one is to three. The grace that leads to laxity is deception from Hades. It will take doctrine. <laughs> Thank you for watching this very video we brought away. We believed you were mightily blessed. Contained in this message are steps and principles you could apply to your life and get the desired result that is required to take you into the next level of your spiritual journey and walk with God. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And most importantly, share this video with friends, family, and the loved ones. We would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts down below in the comment section. And we'll see you in our next video.